Hey guys, um, I've been told that my introduction video was a bit long, so I've decided to try a new layout. I've removed the panoramic view and uh, I've changed the introduction basically. Um, now the bad news is I still haven't received the die for my 3D printed puzzles, so as of yet uh, they are still white and in their box. So unfortunately I don't have any more 3D prints to show you this weekend, but I'm going to take that opportunity to show you two things. The first one will be how to solve a Kilominx in only one algorithm using Philip Marshall's method. And tomorrow I'll show you three custom puzzles that weren't made by me that I never showed on my channel. So before I start, I just wanted to show you something real quick, something really cool. Uh, recently I've been working so much on my channel, trying to make it better and stuff. Uh, I actually got, I went from 500 subscribers in August to 2,700 right now. So it, it was really a, a big step for me. Uh, going you know public with everything and, uh, and really trying to make this channel uh, popular so I wanted to offer myself a little gift so I actually bought something really cool and I just want to show you guys it's something I f that I wanted for uh, exhibitions or stuff like that for example the the Paris World Championships where I will be going something to represent my channel over there and um, it's really really cool it's one of those laser engraved crystals so here you have Greg's puzzles, uh, the whole logo and everything drawn. And on the other side, well, on the inside, sorry, you have the Morning Star, the, the puzzle that the logo was made out of, the, the puzzle that represents my channel. And I think it's so, so cool. I mean, the, the whole puzzle was laser engraved and you actually see the cuts on the inside. So yeah, I just wanted to make a small parenthesis and show you this real quick. Now, on to the main topic of this video. Um, good news, by the way, uh, since I'm filming the video from, well, this direction instead of from here, as I did before, um, I can actually see what I'm doing in the right direction, which means the quality of my video is going to go up, because now, instead of looking at the cube, I'm looking at my camera up here, uh, which means that I can see what I'm filming, and uh, I had some issues, you know, with uh, the puzzle going out of frame when I was turning it like that, and not anymore, so that's nice. Um, now, I'm going to show you uh, the one algorithm that I'm going to use for uh, the solve of this uh, Kilominx. So, the only algorith uh, algorithm sorry, <laughs> that I'm going to use is um, the corner uh, permutation algorithm that I showed you on my uh, two algorithm solution video for the Rubik's Cube. This algorithm here. And you can mirror that by moving this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here by doing the reverse algorithm. It's the same as on the, the video that I showed with uh, Philip Marshall's method. So we're going to apply Philip Marshall's method to this puzzle. So first I'm going to scramble it. Now uh, another small parenthesis, um, I, uh, I had comments saying that my uh, introduction was too long and it was 12 seconds, uh, 15 if you include the, the panoramic view of the puzzle that I was presenting. So I decided to shorten it and make the new one also, um, I've heard that um, my, uh, my microphone isn't good enough and that I have a lot of echo and when I watch my videos I know that is true. So I've also invested 160 euros in a new microphone and uh, some foam pads to cancel out the echo. So it's not, I haven't received them yet, but I will soon. Alright, so let's go, solving this puzzle here. So let's start with the top face. Now this is uh, intuitive. There's no algorithm for it. For example, if you want to bring this piece up here, you have to turn it around the cube. That way it goes up here. Now notice how it's in, oops, it's supposed to go here, sorry. Now if it's in the wrong orientation, what you can do is always like move it like here, for example, then change the orientation on the face. Now if you see on that face, the white is always um, facing that direction. So you move out from the center and turn right. Here, move out from the center, turn right. Uh, here, so if I do this, now it's going to be facing the center. Now if I do it again, it's going to face, be facing outside and left. So it's the right orientation for this uh, set of pieces. Now, for example, this piece, it needs to go here, so I'm going to move this away, bring those two pieces here, move it back, and finish. 
Uh, this is not really an algorithm, it's more logic. And anyways, you could do it a different way. You could always do this, what I did earlier, to orient this piece. Uh, now all that's left is that little white, purple, green piece. Um, now, see, it needs to be paired up with this one. So basically, they need to be on the same, well, they need to be adjacent, but that one's the wrong orientation. So I'm going to use the same method for orienting the piece that I did earlier. So for example, move it like that, like that, like that. And as you can see, uh, wait, still not. As you can see, now the white is facing here, so I can always bring it up and pair these two up. And now the top face is solved. Now, the next part is going to be very intuitive. Uh, let's see, we have yellow blue, it's right here. So I want to bring it here, except in the, it's in the wrong orientation. So same method as before. And it's in the right orientation. Now I'm going to take the blue red corner, which is right here, move it all the way here without messing up the white face. This face doesn't turn anymore at all. Now, same method as before. It doesn't really require any algorithms. Here, same problem. Here, I need purple green, which is right here. It's already in the right orientation. And the last one is purple yellow. Now, where is the purple yellow? It's right here. Now, as you can see, it's stuck between two parts that are already correctly positioned. Now, if I bring it to the top face and move it away from those parts, I can bring that piece back to its original position down here. So now this piece is free and I just need to bring it all the way down to this position. And if it's not oriented properly, I can always do this. As you can see, change the orientation by moving the top face and that's not going to screw up these five pieces, which would have been screwed up if I had moved this face instead, as you can see here. Now on to the five corner pieces on top of those. So these five corner pieces, I need to solve them. So let's see, the, the green one is here, it needs to go there. So as I did before, move it out of the, you know, because here it's, it's stuck between these two pieces. So first you move it out, bring that piece back here, and now I want to bring that down here. So what you can do is you bring it to the position where it needs to be, move it away, bring that piece back and move it back. That way, uh, basically what you did is that um, this piece here, um, well, you moved it away, but then you move these two away so you could bring that piece back here and then move those back again without screwing up these uh, pairs right here. And you need to do this uh, five times. Now, in case this is in the wrong orientation, you can always move it up as I did before and do the same method as I just showed you. So bring it down, move those away, bring that one back to pair it up again and pair up those again by placing these two in the right position. Now, what about the red part? Here it is. So, move it out of the way, bring it all the way here, and apply the method that I showed you. That's just logic, so still, I don't think it should be considered an algorithm, because all of this can be deduced uh, from what you're doing. Now, same as before, bring it down here, move these two away, bring that one back, bring these two back here. Now, if it was in the other direction, like, like this, then it would be these two that you have to move away, this one that you have to pair up again, and these two that you have to bring back here. Now, I only have one last corner piece that is yellow. That's the one here. What do I do? I bring it down here as before, move it away, bring that one back, and bring it back. I'm trying to explain this without any algorithms yet. Um, so now, as you can see, there's one piece that it, that is correctly oriented. So for example, it's right here. It, you just have to pair this up. If there are no pieces that are correctly oriented, you just don't care. Uh, let's, let's take that example, by the way. Now, if that piece was in the wrong orientation, let's say, let's say this is the situation we were in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the algorithm that I showed you earlier on any piece, any set of pieces. It doesn't really matter. As you, as you can see, one of the pieces 
is now in the upwards position so it can be paired up with one of the other corners. So now we're going to use this one as a reference and we're going to move the rest around. Now let's see, um, this piece needs to go here, this one here, this one here, and this one's in the right position. Now as you can see if I do the algorithm in this direction, Well, this piece is in the right position, but it's in the wrong orientation. So we're going to need to use Philip Marshall's method of orienting and positioning at the same time. Now, I've never applied this on this puzzle before. Uh, it's the first time I'm trying this, so let's see how it goes. Now, let's see. We want to bring the, the yellow, sorry, the sort of bright yellow piece on this side. So the green needs to be on top because this yellow piece is going to end up here. As you can see, if I do the algorithm, the yellow ends up on top. So what we want is for the the yellow pieces, um, the yellow stickers, basically, well, the yellow part of that piece to go into the yellow slot on that place, which is on that position, which is basically on that side. So we want the slot to be here, uh, which means I need the green part to be here on top. So this corner needs to be twisted clockwise. Now you can use the method that I showed you earlier, you know, the, the method where if it's not oriented properly, you can just turn it around like that. Well, I'm going to apply this right now. So for example, now we want the green on top. So we're going to do this and bring it on top. Now let's try the algorithm. As you can see, it's in the right orientation as well as position. Now we need to apply the method on these three corners. Now let's see, they're in the right position, uh, but yeah, right position, but wrong orientation. So we want to move them so that they're in the wrong position and orientation. Now the problem is, if I move them in that direction, they're in the right orientation, but wrong position. We need both to be wrong. So I'm going to do it again. And as you can see, now they're in the wrong position and wrong orientation. Now let's see, uh, we want this one basically to go in that direction, this one in that direction, and, well, sorry, the other way around. This one to go here, this one here, and this one here. And we also want to change their orientation, which means, basically, um, if I end up with the right orientation, this is going to end up here, which means the slot for this uh, gray edge, well, this gray, sorry, yeah, corner, should be in this position. Now notice how if I do this, it's in the wrong orientation because the slot on it, if, um, sorry, basically if I do this, the gray is gonna go here and here is the, the, the place for the pink to go. So now let's see, if I move this to that side, no, that's not gonna help. Uh, I'm trying to find an easy way to do this. Um, it is not easy. Um, now if I move this piece, if I switch these two pieces, their positions, now that would be, that would be pink, gray, hmm, that wouldn't work. Let's see, just one second, I'm going to try something. No, that's not going to work. You know what, I'll go with uh, the basic uh, way. Now I'm going to bring the gray, blue, orange right here, so the gray needs to be on top. Um, which means I need to have the pink part here so that the gray replaces the pink. If I do this, the pink is in the right position. Now, this is now going to replace that part, so this is going to go here, this is going to go on top, so on this side, this is, this is actually kind of hard, um, I want the green to replace the gray because the gray needs to be on top and here the green is on top. So let's see, the gray was here, which means I need the green to be here. That should work.
although I'm probably going to lose myself and screw up everything that I just did. Let's see, you never know. Sometimes things can go right, although I am having huge doubts right now. And I guess I'm just lost. Well, shit happens, right? Oh! Oh no, that actually worked. I can't believe that actually worked. Yeah, this is a very complicated complicated uh, solution, so uh, it's <laughs> not for the faint of heart. And anyways, I screwed it up because I messed up the orientation of two pieces, so I'm going to have to show you that again. Oh, I'm desperate right now. This is not the easiest way to go, but it's a one algorithm solution. It's, it, I'm more interested in just the, the principle of having a, a one algorithm solution, even though it's not easy at all. So let's, let's try again. Here, the orange is going to go here, and we want it to go to this position. So this piece would need to be right here. And this will go here. So let's try this. Mm hmm. This is challenging. This is very, very challenging. And it's actually very interesting. And it's working. Wow, this is really cool. Anyways, um, so yeah, it's not an easy method, but it's actually very interesting, and this is why I like it. Um, it's it's very challenging. Uh, the method is clearer on the 3x3, three three, so if you didn't understand the end, watch my 3x3 uh, three three, uh, solve video with uh, Philip Marshall's method, the two algorithm method. Uh, it's much easier to understand, and you can train with the 3x3 three three before trying the kilominx. But basically, yeah, it means that you can solve a kilominx with only one algorithm. So yeah, I think it's it's pretty interesting. Hey guys, I hope you liked today's video. Uh, don't forget that tomorrow I'm showing you custom puzzles, so it's going to be really interesting, so stay tuned. And as always, subscribe to my social networks, and I'll see you in the next video.